Hello everyone welcome back to the channel EVN Ride. Today we're diving into one of the most fascinating aircraft ever built, the legendary Tupolev Tu-144. Known as the Soviet Union's answer to the Concorde, this supersonic transport jet has a history filled with ambition, engineering brilliance, controversy, and innovation. In this video, we'll take a deep look into the Tu-144, exploring its exterior design, interior layout, performance capabilities, safety features, unique selling points, its pricing and development costs, and finally, we'll wrap it up with a complete conclusion. This is not just a plane, it's a story of Cold War competition, human achievement, and lessons that shaped modern aviation. When we talk about the exterior of the Tu-144, the first impression is sheer size combined with aerodynamic elegance. The plane had a needle nose design, a delta wing configuration, and a distinctive droop nose similar to the Concorde, which was designed to give pilots better visibility during takeoff and landing. Its overall length was about 215 feet, and the wingspan stretched to nearly 94 feet. The aircraft's fuselage was long and slim, optimized to reduce drag at supersonic speeds. The Tu-144's exterior materials included a combination of aluminum alloys designed to withstand the intense heat of supersonic flight, which reached over 260 degrees Fahrenheit at cruise altitude. One unique feature was the retractable canards located near the cockpit, which were used to improve low-speed stability, something Concorde didn't have. These small winglets could fold in and out, giving the Tu-144 a distinctive look and a functional aerodynamic advantage in certain flight phases. The landing gear was also remarkably robust. With large reinforced struts and multiple wheels, it could handle the stress of high-speed landings. Its design reflected not just beauty but practicality, built to handle the long runways of Soviet airports and the wear and tear of high-speed operations. Its tail section, engines mounted under the wing roots, and the polished metal body made it look futuristic even by today's standards. Inside the Tu-144, the design was more about function than luxury. Unlike Concorde, which was targeted at wealthy Western travelers, the Tu-144's interior was built in line with Soviet standards. The passenger cabin could seat around 120 to 140 passengers, depending on configuration. The seating layout was simple, with narrow aisles and relatively tight legroom. The seats were functional but lacked the comfort of wide international carriers. The windows were small, and the cabin design used basic Soviet materials of the 1970s. While Concorde emphasized luxury for business elites, the Tu-144's interior was practical, more like a standard airliner cabin with a supersonic twist. Now, let's talk performance, which is where the Tu-144 truly shines as a technological marvel. The aircraft was capable of speeds exceeding Mach 2.15, making it the fastest commercial airliner ever built, even faster than Concorde. Its cruising speed was around 1,350 miles per hour, cutting travel times drastically. For example, the Tu-144 could cover the Moscow to Almaty route in just under two hours, compared to nearly four hours on conventional aircraft. Its range, however, was limited compared to Concorde, managing about 3,080 miles per flight. The aircraft was powered initially by Kuznetsov NK-144 engines, later replaced with Kolsov RD-3651 turbojet engines, which provided better efficiency at supersonic speeds but were notoriously fuel-hungry. The climb rate of the Tu-144 was phenomenal, reaching cruise altitude in just minutes. It could soar up to 60,000 feet, where passengers were treated to views of the curvature of the Earth and the deep blue of the upper atmosphere. It was a breathtaking experience unmatched by standard jets. However, with such performance came massive fuel consumption, noise issues, and operating costs that made it difficult for the aircraft to remain economically sustainable. When it comes to safety features, the Tu-144 had both strengths and challenges. On one hand, its redundant hydraulic and control systems were designed to ensure reliability, and its reinforced structure was built to endure the stresses of supersonic travel. On the other hand, the aircraft faced tragic accidents that exposed its limitations. The most infamous was the 1973 Paris Air Show crash, where a Tu-144 broke apart mid-air, leading to worldwide skepticism. Operationally, the plane also faced technical difficulties like engine failures, cabin noise, and intense vibrations during flight. 
Passengers reported loud engine roars inside the cabin, making it a less comfortable experience compared to Concorde. Despite these challenges, the TU-144 did incorporate innovative safety measures such as advanced braking systems, multiple redundant avionics, and reinforced landing gear. But the real issue wasn't safety in concept, it was reliability. Mechanical breakdowns were common, and maintenance was far more complex compared to other aircraft of the time. Looking at the unique selling points, the TU-144 had quite a few that made it stand out. First, it was the first supersonic commercial airliner to fly, beating Concorde to the skies by two months when it took its maiden flight in December 1968. This was a significant achievement for Soviet aviation, showcasing their technological prowess to the world. Another standout feature was its speed, as no other passenger plane matched its Mach 2.15 capabilities. Its retractable canards also provided aerodynamic stability, something unique compared to its western rival. And finally, the Tu-144 was used not only for passenger service but also for cargo transport and later for NASA test programs, proving its versatility in multiple roles. Talking about price, the Tu-144 was an incredibly expensive project for the Soviet Union. Exact per unit cost figures are difficult to pin down due to the secrecy of the time, but estimates place it at hundreds of millions of dollars per aircraft when adjusted for today's currency. The research and development program cost billions, with more than 16 production aircraft built. For airlines, the operating cost was unsustainable. Fuel consumption was double that of Concorde, and ticket pricing could never offset expenses, especially given the economic model of the Soviet Union. Unlike Concorde, which targeted wealthy passengers with premium fares, the 2144's limited routes and economic inefficiency meant it never generated meaningful profit. In conclusion, the TU-144 remains one of the most fascinating aircraft in aviation history. It was a bold experiment, a supersonic dream that pushed engineering boundaries but fell short of commercial success. Its design was beautiful, its speed unmatched, and its place in history undeniable. While it may not have enjoyed the glamorous legacy of Concorde, the TU-144 proved that supersonic passenger travel was not the exclusive domain of the West. It gave the world an alternative vision of what the future of air travel could look like, even if that future was short-lived. Today, only a handful of TU-144 aircraft remain in museums, serving as reminders of an ambitious era when flying faster than sound was no longer a fantasy. The Tu-144 was a machine ahead of its time, a marvel of Soviet engineering, and a testament to human ambition. It was not perfect, but it was unforgettable. And that is why the TU-144 continues to inspire aviation enthusiasts around the globe. On EVN Ride, we bring you these stories of machines that shaped history, and the TU-144 is one of the brightest stars in that constellation.